In this 10 minute redesign, I'm going to spiff up the intro screen of a productivity iOS app called Helm that's been submitted by one of my students, Chris. And she's already done a great job with this. We've got a solid typeface here that's Founders Grotesque. There's a nice illustration and what's more, they match and create this nice kind of quirky vibe. Plus, everything's well aligned and successfully follows iOS conventions such that there's nothing obvious left to fix. So if we're going to make this look better, we have to talk about some more advanced design strategies to get us from here to here. In this tutorial, I'll be covering some custom icon work, some 201 level typography stuff, microcopy tweaks, and more advanced work with colors. By the way, hi, I'm Eric Kennedy. I'm a freelance UX and UI designer, and I also teach UX and UI design to thousands of students around the world via my online school, Learn UI Design. Link is below. All right, let's get started. So if I'm taking this thing from top to bottom, the first thing I want to do is work on this icon. My main goal here is to make this icon match this text. Unfortunately, Founders Grotesque does not have a good left arrow glyph, so I'm going to have to make that icon myself. I'm going to start by making the horizontal line the same thickness and color of my text. In my article, The King vs. Pawn Game of UI Design, I call this technique drawing with the same pen. Now when I'm drawing an arrow or a back icon, I have a lot of options for how it can look, but remember, we want to be inspired by the font. So let's try and take a look at some glyphs to understand Founders Grotesque more. I always like to explore glyphs like the exclamation point, parentheses, some of these special characters, because oftentimes type designers will put a little more character into these glyphs than they will in the standard alphabet ones. And I'm not saying that what we're gonna do is for instance, just kind of throw a bracket on here and call it an arrow. But maybe, for instance, we'll be inspired by the little bend here and kind of make a bend in our arrow head. So I'll draw my arrow with the vector tool. Then I'll add a new point and drag it a little bit to make the arrow curved. Now keeping the two halves of the arrow head symmetric can be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna componentize this with Command Option K, duplicate it, flip it with Shift V, and then move it down. Now when I mess with one side of the arrow head, the other one stays symmetric. Now after a little bit more tweaking, I have something that I feel like more or less matches the character set. But since this arrow is a little bit wider than a normal glyph, I'm actually going to make it just a tad thinner to sort of compensate for that fact. So we'll do three pixel stroke instead of four. And then when I go to align it with the left edge here, I'm actually going to have the arrowhead a pixel or two past the line of alignment. This makes it appear more aligned with the text below and is sort of an advanced alignment tip. By the way, I linked to an article with three more alignment tips below, but anyhow, yeah, now this matches the font much better. Now I want to move on to this illustration. One thing that's interesting here is the color of the water. In the real world, things that are closer to the camera generally tend to be more saturated or richer. So here we have saturation of 46. And then as you get closer to the horizon, things fade out. This is 16, etc. But in Chris's illustration, that's reversed and the farther away water is saturated more. This lends sort of a cool effect and it's sort of a unique vibe. I like it. But one thing I don't really like is that there's this very thin border around the entire illustration. It feels a bit distracting and if we can get rid of it, all the better. But now we have a new problem. The illustration background right here and the app background have very, very similar colors and so they kind of blur together. So let's tackle this by changing the illustration background, which is probably going to be a less major change to our design system. I'm working in the HSB color system here. And if you're not familiar with it, you should check out the HSB primer that I have linked below. Now the issue is we want this background to be darker, but if we do that by modifying brightness directly, even if the brightness goes to 90, tan is very fickle and it becomes sort of muddy. In my color framework article, also linked below, I explain that instead of just lowering the brightness, we could also raise the saturation. We can make it richer and that's gonna have that same sort of darkening effect. And then as far as the hue goes, again, I explain this elsewhere, but if we start to lower that towards red, it's gonna have that same sort of effect of making the illustration background contrast more against the app background. It might be possible to also do the opposite thing with the app background. For instance, even though we can't raise the brightness here, we could lower the saturation. But even lowering this to three makes this feel a little bit too close to white. And I'm really going for sort of a tan off-white vibe that says, hey, I'm not totally bland and blase, I am intentionally quirky. Now we're getting to this text, which again, isn't totally obvious how we can improve it, and props to Chris for that, but let's take a stab at things. First of all, even though this isn't a ton of words, it is two paragraphs, and anyone swiping through this intro will absolutely not be reading two paragraphs, most likely. 
So let's edit this down, and as a little trick, I like to imagine I'm being paid $100 for every word I remove. That makes it a lot easier. I'm also a fan of using bolding to make it easier to scan. This can even contribute to the brand, like by highlighting sustained focus and block everything else, we're emphasizing that this is an opinionated app that believes in the power of doing deep focused work. What's next? How about sizing? So in my article on iOS font size guidelines, linked below, I mentioned that 17 points is actually the default iPhone font size. So this is technically good to go, but by making it a little bigger and maybe a little bit more spaced out, it kind of owns its space a little bit better. Now in trying to make this look more striking, I can also mess with the width of the text box. Normally I wouldn't do something like make it all totally off center, but because this app is supposed to have sort of an affected quirkiness, it might actually work. I'll grab my same text color as above for this little vertical pipe element, and then just maybe make it a lesser opacity like 70%. But now in doing this, I have a new line of alignment here, and I might actually fiddle with putting everything aligned to it. This allows me to bump up the title font size to something more dramatic. And I'll give the arrow a reduced opacity and size so it competes even less with the big title. That's Design Judo right there. If you want the title to stand out, make the elements around it stand out less. Now in my opinion, this is actually starting to look really cool. The last thing we want to do here is fix up this button. Now color-wise, Chris hasn't decided on a theme color per se, so we could do something like take this blue from the sea and just use that. But Chris went and grabbed a whole bunch of cool colors that might work. If you want to do something like this, by the way, my gradient tool linked below can be a really handy way. In this case, I'm going to go with the purple because that's pretty different. Because my other elements here, like this pipe and this illustration, have very low border radiuses, I'm going to remove it for the button. And I feel like this works with the brand. We don't want something that feels too soft and friendly. That leaves just the text. And I think Chris did a great job styling this, but I'm just going to mess around with the letter spacing a little bit. One thing I like to do is type in a value that's clearly too much and then reduce it until I get into a range that starts to make sense. This is just a little trick that can make it easier to see what's working instead of just increasing from zero. So I think 3% looks more or less fine here. All right, and that more or less wraps it up, folks. So we went from this to this and in the process made typography, color, and icon adjustments that help bring a good design to the next level. Now, if you like this, you can sign up to get updates whenever I release new content like this at designhacks.com, which is linked below. And if you're serious about learning design, check out my online video courses, Learn UI Design and Learn UX Design. Learn UI Design covers all the visual design stuff that we talked about today. Color, typography, branding, and more. And Learn UX Design is about creating usable apps. It's best practices around forms, navigation, flows, mobile design, and other strategies that keep your apps intuitive and easy to use. Both courses have tons of sample projects that illustrate the lessons, so it's like sitting behind my shoulder as I show you how a professional designer approaches every aspect of modern digital design. Check them out at learnui.design or learnux.design. Both are linked below. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, leave a comment. Cheers.